morning. Some people would say, why are you inside? I mean, it's such a beautiful morning, you know? Such a beautiful morning. And I will say, last week, um, I had a number of parishioners <laughs> confess to me. They weren't in church, but they, they felt compelled to tell me why. <laughs> they were out doing all these other things, you know, but they, they somehow felt guilty because <laughs> they, they weren't here. But anyway, and some of them are not here today, so they're probably out doing those same things. Scott wanted me to make sure I showed you this candle. This, uh, actually, the way it was was like this. It got warm in here this week. And uh, I was in here about quarter to six this morning trying to get the temperature down. And I wasn't as successful as I was last week. It was about 82 when I came in at uh, around six. And I only got it down to about 80 at, at nine o'clock. Last week, I was able to get it down to 75. And I think it was hotter last week than this week. So I don't know what I did differently, um, but anyway. Oh, never thought about that. Humidity. No, I, th I love that. That means it's not my fault. Yes, it's the humidity. That's wonderful. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay, my name is Mark. I'm pastor here. And uh, this morning, we are blessed. We're going to have a message brought to us by our minister of music, Adam Hall. So I get to listen and be nourished and fed today. We're talking about transitions and throughout the summer, transitions in our church, in our community, in our nation. Last week we talked about, um, we saw all the flags that we have experienced as a nation and all the changes that, that we go through and what that, how that affects us as Christians. Um, I think, I haven't heard his sermon, but in our conversations, I think Adam today is talking about transformation uh, and transition from a personal perspective. And so um, we will be blessed uh, a couple of things before we worship. If there's something or someone for whom you'd like us to be in prayer, these blue cards are in the pews. Feel free to fill one out. Let us know the name of the person, what we're praying for, for healing, or is it a celebration or a joy? And as we sing, you can bring the prayer cards up and put them in this basket. We'll attend to them later in our worship service. And also these red books um, that are in the center aisle, if you would not mandatory, but if you are willing to let us know you're here, if you want more information about the church, let us know that as well. I think that's it for housekeeping, except to tell you what our opening hymn is. It's in the small black hymnal. Words will also be on the screen, and this will be a familiar tune. I'll play the tune through for you, so it'll be a familiar tune. Um, it's number 2170 in the faith we sing, God made from one blood. Let's listen to an introduction. After we pray, then we'll stand and sing together. Well, God, thank you for the gift of the day. And we pray that your spirit would bless us, be present with us, help us to be present to you and to each other. For the one who speaks the word to us and for all of us who listen, um, may our time together this morning shine some new light on some ancient truth. Help us to know ourselves better and to love you better as well. We're grateful for all with us this morning and for members of our church family who are out and about and enjoying the day. Wherever we are, whoever we are, help us to know the power of your love for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
children today? I saw two of them light the candles. Are there, are there any children that want to come? You don't have to, because this could be for the adults as well. Really, children, adults, to me it's the same. But you can sit here if you want. <coughs> so for Edward, who's the only one here, and for all of you who are also the only ones here, I have just a question. And I was, I've been thinking about this this week. <coughs> what is a caterpillar's job? So what, what is a caterpillar's, what's its goal? What are its dreams and visions? What is, what is a caterpillar? Yeah. To turn into a butterfly. That's all it's thinking about? Day to day, just on the boat. Okay. What is a butterfly's job? They lay eggs and then they die. That's its job. Ooh, all right. Well... Uh, maybe. That's a job. Okay. <clears throat> so they have different jobs. What is the difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly? Caterpillars don't have wings. Oh, there is? Oh, well, you've seen caterpillars and butterflies. <clears throat> so when a caterpillar goes into the cocoon, what is it thinking? It's, it's sleeping? It's just sleeping. It's not thinking at all. I'm just trying to think. Physically, the caterpillar and the butterfly are very different. But is it the same, is it the same creature? Does it have the same thoughts? Does it have the same desires? <coughs> it's the same creature. But it has differences. It takes 10 days yeah, to yeah. turn into a butterfly? It turns, it turns On the 10th day, it turns into a butterfly. Does it happen all at once? Or it takes 10 days? Ten days. It takes 10 days. <clears throat> and then it becomes a butterfly. I just, I just always think caterpillar, butterfly, they're different, right? It, one turns into the other. But aren't they also the same? How much caterpillar is left over in the butterfly? A lot is left over in the butterfly. A lot of caterpillar is left over in the butterfly. This is what I've been thinking about all week. It's just driving me crazy. How much caterpillar is in the butterfly? How much physical caterpillar is in the butterfly? And then how much emotional caterpillar is in the butterfly? Because they're the same creature but it's, they have totally different jobs now. Their focus is on something totally different. But, there are, but is, is, it, is it still the same? Is, is Bill the caterpillar? Is now Bill the butterfly? Is it, is it still Bill? Yeah, lay eggs. But that's not the caterpillar's job. He just gets a new job. Yeah. They do turn to cocoon. Okay, so last question, last question. Okay. What grade are you in? You're in third grade? No, did, you go to, did you go to school today? I'm in fourth. You're in fourth grade. Are you in fourth grade? Basically. Basically. Yeah. You're kind of in between. What is your goal in third grade? What are you learning about? What are you doing in third grade? What did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You learn how to tell time and money. Okay. What are you going to learn next year? Same stuff? Different stuff? What's the difference between a third grader and a fourth grader? They do a lot more stuff than third graders do. They might have new jobs, new things to learn. Yeah. They're both together. That's true. That sometimes they do uh, join classes. Are you still the same person in third grade and in fourth grade? And second grade. And second grade. Yes, but you learn more things. Yes, but you learn more things. And does that change you? Or are you still you? No. Or are you mostly you? It changes because you get smarter. It changes you because you get smarter? I don't know if there's any answers to this. It's just what I've been thinking about all week. Let's just have a prayer and maybe God can 
work it out. Loving and gracious God, thank you that we can be third graders and then fourth graders. Thank you for growth. Thank you for transformation. Thank you for periods of transition. And thank you most of all for being with us as we go through these periods. In your name we pray. Amen. You can go sit down if you'd like. Actually, even if you wouldn't like, go sit down. might be another way to just feel better, just feel better about today. Oh no, if you never want to have to turn and go away, you might feel better, might feel better if you stay. Yeah, yeah, I bet you haven't heard a word I've said. Yeah, yeah, if you've had enough of all your trying, just give up the state of mind you're in. If you want to be somebody else, if you're tired of fighting battles with yourself, if you want to be somebody else, change your mind. Change your Hey, hey, have you ever danced in the rain or thanked the sun just for shining, just for shining o'er the sea? Oh, no, take it all in the world to show, and yeah, you look much better, look much better when you glow. Yeah, yeah, I hope you've heard every word I've said, yeah, yeah. You've had enough of all your trying. Just give up the state of mind you're in. If you want to be somebody else, if you're tired of fighting battles with yourself, if you want to be somebody else, change your mind. Change your mind. Hey, hey, what you say? We both go and seize the day. Cause what's your hurry? What's your hurry anyway? Yeah, yeah. I hope you've heard every word I've said. Yeah, yeah. You've had enough of all your trying. Just give up the state of mind you're in. If you want to be somebody else, if you're tired of losing battles with yourself, if you want to be somebody else, change your mind, change your mind, change your mind. Get out of your mind. 
Good morning. We're going to start off with a reading from Matthew, um, chapter 17, verses 1 to 2. <clears throat> After six days, Jesus took, him, took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a mountain by themselves. There he was, transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Next we're going to do, I think, responsibly, Psalm 8, verses 1 to 9. It's in the hymnal, pages 343 to 4. Are, are, the, are we going to have the words up on the screen? Okay. Hey, there they are. Magic. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which have set... Mm, I've got different words than you guys do. No, I'm not. I'm in my Bible. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just read the screen. What are human beings that you are mindful of them and mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them little less than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dom dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. Our Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And our final reading is from Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. <clears throat> Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve of God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordant with the measures of faith God has given you. Just as each of us is one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same functions, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all in, and is prophesying. Let him use it in the proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is in leadership, let him govern diligently. It is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. What is the difference between a transition and a transformation? Anybody want to hazard a guess? Nobody knows? No one? Jan? <coughs> transition could be a thing. Transformation is something that happens maybe to something that's alive. Okay. I think there are several differences. So 
some of which contradict each other. And in my mind, they relate to the physical versus the spiritual. At least before I started writing this sermon, that's how I thought about them. But not always the same way around, either. But one difference I noticed right away uh, is the word transform is in the Bible four times. Once in Job, once in Romans, which we just heard, once in 2 Corinthians, and once in Philippians. Does anybody know how many times the word transition appears in the Bible? Zero times. And I checked dozens of translations. Transition does not appear in the Bible at all. And here I am, tasked with preaching a sermon on transition. That's great. So I ask again, what is the difference then between transforming and transitioning? When I sat down to speak with Mark about this, my first thought was of a phone booth. Several phone booths, in fact. <clears throat> I thought of Clark Kent dashing into a phone booth and transforming into Superman. And then I thought of Maxwell Smart walking into that phone booth in the opening credits of Get Smart on his shoe phone and being whisked away into the control headquarters. I know a lot of you are younger than I am. You won't get that. <clears throat> to me, Clark Kent was transformed and Maxwell Smart transitioned from one place to another. When you transform, you change while the world around you stays the same. And when you transition, you stay the same while the world around you changes. Maybe, maybe not. Not really. Bill and Ted use their phone booth for transportation. Doctor Who enters the phone booth and steps into another space entirely. Harry Potter uses a phone booth to enter the Ministry of Magic. And the characters in the Matrix movies use a phone booth to transition between the physical and mental realms. I don't know what it is about phone booths that inspire so much imagination and mystery, but they are symbols of both transition and transformation wherever we find them. And do you know how many phone booths are in the Bible? I've lost some weight recently. I'll forgive you for not noticing, because even more recently I gained most of it back. But I'm working on physical transformation. In my mind, transformation is physical change. Superman comes out looking different than Clark did going in. The Transformers are shape-changing robots. They're the same creatures, but sometimes they look like cars, and sometimes they look like robots. They are the same creature, but they look physically different. When I undergo a transition, I don't often expect to come out of it looking physically different. The big transitions in our life are often structural or internal. We experience transitions in our careers, in our relationships, in our software programs, and when the dust has settled, we don't have laser eyes or headlights. It's just us in a new setting. That's what I thought. But remember, I told you that these things, these things don't always stay the same way around. They get reversed. <clears throat> if I told you that I saw someone who physically looked like they were transitioning, what does that mean to you? Hopefully, first you tell me to mind my business, because it's not mine. But we often use the term transitioning for transgendered people who are moving physically from one gender to another in response to who they feel in their souls to be. Oftentimes we don't use it in the nicest way, but we use the word transition. So in this case, transition means physical. Your soul stays the same, but the environment, in this case your physical body, changes. A physical transition. And transformation can be spiritual. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what Paul says to the Romans. Transformation is in your mind, according to Paul. When would you feel like a person transformed? Have you ever felt like a person transformed? Was it because you lost 10 pounds? Or was it something in your mind or soul that caused you to feel like a new and different person? Or more likely, was it both? <clears throat> when I was discussing my weight loss goals with my wife, she told me the only time she ever really successfully loses weight 
is when she's happy and relaxed. It doesn't matter what she's eating or exercising or none of that. It doesn't matter. If she's not in a good frame of mind, physically, there's no change. Physical change is linked very closely to mental state. And I can tell you in my own health journey, setting myself up for success means creating systems that get my mind to toe the line, not my body. My body will pretty much do what I tell it. But I, am I in the right place spiritually and mentally to tell my body to do the right things? <clears throat> Today marks the two-year anniversary of my giving up sugar completely. No, I mean, the two-week anniversary of giving... It just feels like two years. It, I feel like it's really feels like a long time. It's true, but that's true. Two weeks ago today, I had my last processed sugar. <clears throat> For the past two weeks, I have had no processed sugar in an attempt to transform my body. Mostly, I'm hoping to rid myself of some of my back pain. Um, you know, I won't complain if I drop a few pounds. I, I have, haven't, but I won't complain. And, and I did it, and I have done it. It has not been easy. Do you know how many foods in America have sugar in them? Yes, all of them. That's right. Exactly all of them. <clears throat> and I have seen my hand move absentmindedly on its own towards the snack table in the back of the church or to the fruit snacks that the kids have in the pantry at home. I am in the habit of just reaching for a snack without thinking about whether or not it has sugar in it. So now I have to think about it. This is not a physical battle for me at all. This is a battle of mind and soul. And I will come out of it a different person one way or another. <clears throat> After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Transfigured. Now, what the heck does that mean? Does that mean transformed? Is that the same? According to the dictionary, it means to change in outward form or appearance or to transform. So Jesus was still the same Jesus on the inside, perhaps, but he looked different. But was he the same? We don't get a lot of lead up to this scene. It just says, after six days, what happened during those six days? We don't know. We don't know what prompted it. We don't know what was going on before that. Six days, and they went up to the mountain for a conference call. What was Jesus feeling? Did he want to go to this meeting? Was he obligated to go to this meeting? What did they talk about? Was he changed when he came back? We don't have the answers to that. But the idea of a link between the emotional and the physical is not a new one. Poor Bruce Banner... <coughs> undergoes a transformation every time he gets angry, and he's happy to warn you, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. There was a slide for that, but I found that something else. So, <clears throat> uh, he would say, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, and, and then he would turn into the Incredible Hulk. And before it was Bruce and the Hulk, it was Jekyll and Hyde, and as much as we'd like to think that we never Hulk out, our souls have a lot of influence over our bodies, and vice versa. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. That's what Paul says right before he tells us that we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So the message then is this. Offer your bodies to God to do God's work and transform yourselves by renewing your minds. If you want to be somebody else, change your mind. That's what the song said. If only it were that easy. I mean, changing our bodies seems easier, doesn't it? I mean, a new haircut, trip to the tanning salon, some liposuction and Botox for a good measure. And do any of those things make you happier? Yeah, of course they do for a time. But let me tell you from personal experience, there is a big difference between a happy haircut and an angry haircut. And what I mean is that I have been in a bad place before and decided 
a new hairstyle might be just what I needed to get me out of it. New do, new me, right? And maybe I like it. Maybe it does when I had hair. <clears throat> and maybe it lifts my spirits, but it doesn't solve my problems. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm reminded of why I got the haircut in the first place. But I've also been in a really good place before and decided that maybe a new haircut is just a way to show off the new me. And when I look in the mirror at myself after that haircut, knowing that the transformation was a choice I made to reflect my own positive inner energy rather than an attempt to force some positive inner energy into myself, let's just say I can tell the difference. You can be as beautiful on the outside as anyone has ever been, but if you don't feel beautiful on the inside, what difference does it make? There's one more difference I've noticed in my own head between transformations and transitions. When something is transformed, it happens fast, sometimes instantaneously. But when a transformation takes years to complete, we call it a transition. It's a perception thing, I think. When people who haven't seen my children for a long time tell me how big they've gotten, I realize that to them, my children have transformed. They have instantly become older, taller, more mature sometimes. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. But I see my kids every day. I've seen the transition. It's a process. It's a process that leads to transformation. So whether we suddenly get bit by a radioactive spider or we spend years training, working, building, setting up bat caves, the end result is that we are now changed. <clears throat> Some of us into joking and annoying web spinners and others into angsty, brooding, dark nights. But here's the good news. We've got options. We aren't relying on a whim of fate to provide us with power. See, Paul goes on to tell us that to become powerful, we just have to be ourselves. To use the gifts God has already given us, even if they don't always seem like gifts. You have value no matter what society tells you, and just because you aren't doing what some people think you should be doing doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it. But you have to do it. If your gift is in prophecy, do it. If your gift is in teaching, do it. Give, love, lead, sing, dance, make waffles, fix toilets. Do what you know you can do, but you have to do it. Get your body moving, but in order to get your body moving, you have to fix your mind first. Transformation, transition, whatever you want to call it, just do it. I urge you, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. And I don't know if you remember the, the last word of the scripture. Do you remember what the last word is, Dion? No, of course not. Joyfully is the last word. Have you ever offered your body as a living sacrifice next to somebody else who clearly did not want to be a living sacrifice? Someone who was there not out of a deep sense of love and gratitude, but of obligation, and sometimes even unwilling obligation. How'd that go for you? How much fun is it to work alongside a miserable and reluctant teammate? But have you ever worked next to someone who was so filled with the Spirit Everything they did became holy, from changing batteries to taking out the trash. I've heard from some folks that working passionately and joyfully can be healing, that they can't believe their backs aren't killing them after hours of what some people would call hard work. What a joy it is to be with those people, and what an even greater joy it is to be those people. But it's hard work. Physical change takes a lot of spiritual discipline and sometimes a lot of soul searching. It takes prayer and meditation and then it takes discipline and study. But it is possible to become the people God is calling us to be. All it takes is everything. Every bit of us, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and we can be transformed. And the only catch is we have to do it willingly and joyfully. Because God is not 
dragging us, kicking and screaming into the presence of the divine. God is inviting us. I hope you'll accept the invitation and all the hard work that goes along with it. I'm going to try to, knowing that I will fail, that I will fall short, I will sin, I will make mistakes, but I'm going to try. I'm going to tell my body to do God's work every day that I can, and the way I'm going to do it is to cast aside as much of my anger, fear, anxiety, stubbornness, pride, despair, as I can. And I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind, I hope. I'm going to do this for God, I'm going to do this for myself, and I'm going to do this for all of you, because I know you'll be right there alongside with me on the journey, and you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Let's pray. <clears throat> Loving and forgiving God, we confess that our minds are not always focused on you, that we do not always do your will, and we confess that sometimes we do your will less than joyfully. Guide us, shape us, mold us, create in us a renewed desire to follow you so that we may offer ourselves joyfully up to you. When your word came down that we needed to be born again, our first thought was of the physical and how impossible that would be. Help us to recognize the true meaning of your words and to know that the impossible is possible with you and that any physical work there is to be done must start with our minds and our spirits. Breathe new life into us and be with us in the world this week as we go out to do what you ask us to do. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Well done, Adam. Let's pray together. God, thank you for the gift of the day. And, uh, Thank you for the opportunity to pray together that you hear us, our screams and our cries and our whispers, that you, according to Jesus, already know what we're going to pray, and yet we're called to speak it, to pray our prayers for perhaps we're the ones who need to hear them more than you. We pray for this person's stepfather suffering from cognitive and physical problems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this person, Tommy, for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. see for my children and grandchildren to continue to grow with the years and for my health Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. for those uh, affected by immigration and um, expected raids and for those called to protect them Lord, in your mercy. For Donna and family on the death of Lee after a long and rich life, for peace and comfort, Lord, in your mercy. 
for members of our church family uh, in nursing homes and hospitals, uh, for strength and for healing to be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I know you're speaking, Scott, but I can't hear you. Oh, yes, for those in the path of the hurricane. Thank you. Yes, for them. Lord, in your mercy. God, thank you for the life you give us, the gifts you entrust to us, for opportunities to grow in strength and faith, patience and courage, for the call to love one another, for the good news that we're loved as we are, even as your spirit works in us and among us and through us, changing us, transforming us, helping us to become all that we're created to be. For the prayers we offer out loud, the ones we speak in the quiet of our hearts, we give them to you now, not only in the name of Jesus, but as we pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we give, we're going to sing, Breathe on me, breath of God, it's in the uh, red hymnals, number 420. I believe the words will also be on the screen. I'll play an introduction. Let's sing and give joyfully together. Well, God, thank you again for the gifts entrusted to us, and now we give something back to you. With some intentionality, with some thought, we have made an offering today. We're invited to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. We give today trusting that blessing can come upon what we offer, asking you to give us wisdom so that what we give might make the message of Jesus clearer, more inviting, more relevant, so that the good news of Jesus might be heard and felt. Thank you for 
what you give to us. Bless what we give now. In his name we pray. Amen. I don't have a lot of announcements. Staff Parish is meeting Tuesday night at 7. There's a supper this afternoon. Thrift Shop is open tomorrow. Um, it's going to be hot. Um, it's going to rain. In several months, it's going to get cold. <laughs> Please sign the prayer letters. There will be some in the back of the church on that counter. You don't need to know the persons uh, personally in order to sign them, but let them know that they've been held in prayer. Any other announcements that I'm supposed to share today? Seeing none, hearing none. Let's sing. Go out and swim and, uh, or ride your bikes with your helmets on or go for walks or enjoy sitting on your porch or in the backyard, do whatever. But first, before we do, let's sing number 2153 in the small black hymnal, but you don't really need the hymnal because you know this one. Um, the words, I believe, will be on the screen. Am I right about that? There's not a lot of words, but can we mean it? That's the question, because this, this hymn implies a willingness to be transformed.
is such a fun song to play. <laughs> I, when you all go, I, maybe I'll just sit here and play that for another couple hours. Change a few keys, make up some new lyrics. Will you live so God can use you? But that's the question. I mean, will you live so God can use you? You can sing it, and you can clap your hands, and I can change keys, and I can jazz it up, or I can play it like Mozart would play it. But will we live so God can use us? That's the question. We ask for God's blessing. God, bless your people. Bless your people. Not just when we sneeze. <laughs> bless your people for the work of today. May we pray, sing, live, give, believe. May we live so God, so you can use us. Use us this week. That's our prayer. And bless us for the work and ministry that awaits us. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's greet each other in Christ's name.